Dutch sailors coming back from the more remote islands of Indonesia would tell stories of sightings of dragons, sometimes fire-breathing giant beasts. When the islands were properly studied, they were found to not be dragons, but a new undiscovered animal, a mysterious giant lizard not officially known to Western scientists until 1910, being named Komodo dragons in English. They are not monsters, however, although the Dutch accounts may have been embellished, with the saliva hanging from their mouth and their primitive gape, they do look positively prehistoric compared to most slick predators of the day. Many reptiles share these features that make them look like they are from another time but not many look this way while also having the fearless, not bothered behaviour of an apex predator. But their appearance isn't just superficial, and in some ways they are a relic from another time, as they have an ancestry that dates all the way back to when the dinosaurs were still around. So how did a large ancient lizard come to rule over these islands? Komodo dragons are monitor lizards, and although dwarfed in comparison to Komodo dragons, all monitors are big animals, with the seven largest species of lizard in the world all being monitor lizards, living across several different continents. They first appeared about 30 million years ago. However, their family, the Varanids, have ancient origins, dating all the way back to before the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs, around 70 to 80 million years ago in the late Cretaceous period. The earliest varanid known in the fossil record was known from Mongolia, and were tiny, being able to sit in the palm of your hand. However, this definitely wasn't the rule for these ancient lizards that lived at this time. There was another lizard called Paleosaniwa that was around 3 meters long, being comparable in size to a modern Komodo dragon, although unlike the Komodo dragon, it definitely wasn't the largest predator in its habitat, as it shared an ecosystem with giant dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex its fossils being found in the Hell Creek Formation in North Dakota. Paleosaniwa was almost certainly carnivorous, and similar to modern day monitor lizards, probably would have eaten just about anything from small animals to dinosaur eggs, and it certainly would have been big enough to eat small dinosaurs. Although a more recent study of Paleosaniwa has found that it may not be a true varanid, but closely related to the common ancestor of monitor lizards and the Gila monster. Pinning down where the true monitor lizards originated has been difficult, because their earliest remains are often fragmentary, but also their family and other close relatives have fossils all over the world, including places like North America that have no native species of monitor lizards today. However, recently, the fossil of an ancient Chinese lizard named Archaeovarinus were discovered that has features from both ancient varanids and monitor lizards, and adding to this, an Asian origin is supported by genetic evidence. So they most likely originated in Asia, and then spread out to their current habitats, eventually reaching as far as Indonesian islands and Australia, which is actually where they are most common now, with around half of all monitor lizard species living in this region. Komodo dragons inhabit the islands of Flores and Komodo, where they are the undisputed largest predators on the islands, and for a long time it was thought that Komodo dragons may actually owe their large mass to being isolated here. It was thought that a normal sized monitor lizard swam to islands such as Floris, which had no large carnivores, and so the lizard evolved to fill the big predator niche, isolated on the island. Without the competition of large predators, and without the threat of being hunted, the disadvantages of gaining in size, like losing their ability to climb, not being as agile, or not being able to hide as well, wouldn't have been as much of an issue, so there would be nothing to stop them from adapting a more desirable body size for a predator. And on the surface, this sounds like it could be true, because Flores has other examples of island gigantism, but also Flores has a history with a lot of island weirdness in general that the Komodo dragons would have been witness to. The thigh bone and other fragments of another now extinct predator have been discovered on Flores, dating back to around 50,000 years ago. The bones belong to a bird, specifically a species of stork, although they are nearly twice the size of the largest living storks. It was named Leptoptilus robustus, and was related to the giant marabou stork that lives in Africa, only it would have stood as tall as a fully grown man. At this time, Flores was also home to animals that had adapted to become much smaller, which was actually due to a very similar biological process. Because insular environments cause animals to shuffle to a different niche that is more optimal to their survival, it doesn't necessarily always mean they will get bigger. For instance, due to there being less plants to eat on a smaller land area, it can become optimal for some animals to shrink down, to better suit the amount of resources in the environment. 
which may have happened to the archaic humans that inhabited the islands, as there are many bones belonging to a small species of human that were only around a metre tall, named Homo floresiensis. The largest herbivore living on Floris were close relatives of elephants, called stegodons, that on the mainland were usually around the same size as elephants, but on the island they were around the size of a cow. Whether being scavenged or actively hunted, the pygmy elephant were very likely prey for the Komodo dragons. There isn't any direct evidence for this, but Komodo dragons are capable of killing animals as large as water buffaloes, and these animals aren't native, and were introduced by modern humans, so wouldn't have lived on the island at this time. So it was thought that like many of the other inhabitants of Floris, Komodo dragons' large stature may also be a product of the island's unique ecology. However, it is now known that this can't be true, because the bones of Komodo dragons have been discovered on other Indonesian islands, and even northern Australia dating to around 300,000 years ago. But also, the oldest bones of Komodo dragons in Australia date as far back as 4 million years ago, which is more than three times older than their fossil record on Floris, showing that Komodo dragons did not just live in Australia, but it is also very likely this is where they originated. And these Australian bones are very similar in size to Komodo dragons, showing there has been little to no change in body size after their migration. And it wasn't just Komodo dragons, and as recently as 50,000 years ago, it seems Australasia was swarmed with giant monitors. In East Timor, the fossils of a yet unidentified giant monitor species, even bigger than a Komodo dragon, have been discovered. And also around this time, Australia was home to Komodo dragon's much larger relative, Megalania, the largest land lizard known to have lived, which may have been able to grow around 5 metres long. Megalania and Australian Komodos would have both coexisted, and suggested by where their bones have been discovered, evolved alongside big predatory marsupials, like the marsupial lion, that lived around the same time as them. So the fossil record shows that huge monitors evolved and persisted alongside a variety of ferocious mammals, and this didn't present an issue for them reaching monstrous proportions. This is probably because monitor lizards aren't normal lizards. Lizards and reptiles in general often tire easily, however many species of monitor lizards are able to actively chase down their prey in a way that resembles similar sized mammals. Reptiles have three chambered hearts, which means that their respiration isn't as efficient as it could be. Birds and mammals have four chambered hearts, which keeps the oxygenated blood completely separate from the deoxygenated blood in the process of pumping. However, because reptiles don't have a separated bottom chamber, the blood can mix a little, losing some efficiency. However, monitor lizards, although still possessing three chambered hearts, pump the blood in such a way that very little mixes, improving efficiency, making them much faster. For instance, the parente in Australia can run over 20 miles per hour, which is extraordinarily fast for a reptile, which might explain why historically they have had little issue competing with mammals. This, among other reasons, has made monitor lizards very successful, with many large monitor lizards of 1 to 2 meters surviving and thriving across several different continents, alongside similar sized predatory mammals, even including some invasive species like the Nile monitors that can now be found in Florida. However, what it was about Australasia specifically that turned monitor lizards into enormous predators remains a mystery. However, it is now known that the large size of Komodo dragons has nothing to do with the islands where they live, and they are actually a relic from a time when ancient giant lizards dominated throughout much of Australasia. And what we are actually seeing is an averagely sized giant lizard species that just happened to survive into the present. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.